Hi, I'm Peter Barrett. I'm founding GP here at Playground Global, and I'm on the board of Psyquanum. Jeremy O'Brien walks in here claiming to be able to build a million cubic quantum machine. And he made a persuasive argument that suggested Moore's law would allow the devices he was going to make those machines out of uh, to progress to the point where you could build a practical machine. But he also said he had an architecture which was a million times too big. And the machine he wanted us to invest in was roughly the size of the Sierra Nevadas. But he assured us that like Moore's law, he could exponentially improve that architecture over time and build a machine that was practical in a bounded amount of years. And bless his heart, that's exactly what he's been doing for the last eight and a half years. Civilization runs on computation, and so we're always very interested in progressing the kinds of computers uh, we have and the kinds of computations we can do. Dating back to the 90s, there was some indication that you could use photons to build very, very large quantum computers, and some of that came from out of the University of Queensland, and I was aware of that research, but felt like there was a big gap between uh, the aspiration of building that machine and the materials and physics required to actually do it. The real exciting thing about the way they are approaching this is they broke it down into a series of impossible things they needed to do, and one after the other, the impossible thing just became engineering, right? The, 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 the feed forward, being able to detect individual photons at a certain level of fidelity. And so piece by piece, metric by metric, uh, algorithmic improvement by algorithmic improvement, these guys have worked from something which looked impossible to something that now merely looks like construction. It's embarrassing when you realize that, you know, you've worked with a lot of very clever people in your life, and when you draw a pie chart of where they work, a ridiculous percentage of them uh, are at Psyquantum. And, you know, uh, Mercedes Insight that led to the GHZ states making the thing even plausible uh, was a breakthrough, uh, Naomi's work on shrinking the machine from the size of the Sierra Nevadas to the size of something we actually build. Sam and the algorithms team, I mean, across the board, these are some of the smartest people on the planet. Software may be eating the world, but you can't eat software. You've got to be grounded in the physical reality. And if you want to make a quantum computer, you have to make devices, you have to make materials, you have to develop processes, and you have to do it using the most exotic technologies on Earth, which is semiconductor manufacturing technologies. And we're now into you know, a number of fundraisers where the previous raise was, we are going to solve problem X. We're going to solve, we're going to build the world's best optical switch, or we are going to achieve feed forward, which has never been achieved before. And over the cadence of those promises made and kept, uh, later stage capital got a sense that these guys could do what they say they were going to do, and the more intimate those later stage sources of capital became, the more confidence was that not only that was the machine going to work, um, but that allowed a deeper understanding of what it was for to develop. And that's only, that process is still ongoing and is only accelerating. It was very exciting given that so much of the original ideas around photonic quantum computing originated in Queensland, it seemed natural. Uh, that that would at least be a plausible site for the first machine. But I thought it was pretty extraordinary of the Queensland government and uh, the Australian federal government to get behind such a bold program. Uh, I think it is going to pay huge dividends in having Australia take a leadership role in the quantum ecosystem. There's enormous quantum talent in applications that is going to grow up around that machine. So I was incredibly excited to hear that it would uh, be built there, not only because there's a bunch of Australian founders and Australian board member, um, but I do think it is a, uh, a real watershed for the country and allows more degrees of freedom and explain to my parents what I do for a living. A storied city like Chicago, who has an incredible history of engineering feats, ridiculous engineering feats, like, you know, jacking up the entire city, reversing the rivers, being central to the Manhattan Project, uh, foundational in the national labs, uh, that it was extraordinary to see that city be the, the, the natural landing site for the first U.S. Uh, machine. And obviously, you know, we know about two sites. I suspect at some point there will be more, but I think Queensland and uh, Chicago are ideal locations for the first two. 
we're starting to see that people understand how important this technology will be. That AI is not a panacea, that many of the most fundamental problems we need to address can only be addressed by large-scale quantum computers. And to see the Jensen's and the Satya's and the Sundar's of the world uh, staking claim to it is exciting because it means that they recognize it too. Uh, and the ecology of applications and people who will uh, be taking advantage of the machines once they arrive is, it, it, that's incredibly exciting. It's precisely what we thought would happen. But I think what people have overlooked is that, you know, Sai's been building a million qubit machine for the better part of a decade. And they recognized day one, that was what they needed to do. It is gratifying to see uh, pretty much unanimity among tech leaders that, yeah, you need a big machine, you need fault tolerance to do anything useful. Um, and it's great that psychonom has been doing that for nine years while everybody is just waking up to it now. There are lots of different ways of building qubits. You know, there's arguably a million ways to make one qubit, but there's really only one way we know to make a million qubit machine. And I think the, the uh, a lot of what we are seeing now is very competent engineering and physics, building systems that can demonstrate that quantum computers can do things that classical computers can't, but no good paths to getting from the tens or hundreds of qubits into the million qubit, re qubit regime. Right? The best quantum computer we have in the world right now is, is arguably Willow from Google. The Psy quantum machine is 10,000 times that size and can only be thought of as, as a plausible thing to do if you start from day one developing the process technology, developing the materials, developing the supply chain, developing the algorithms uh, that are targeted against, targeted against a big machine, right? That taking a small machine and scaling it up is rather like trying to get to the moon, climbing successively taller trees. You need a different technology. And Psy Quantum's been building a rocket for nine years.